So our passages this morning uh, here for Thanksgiving tell us a couple of things and just uh, make it very, very brief uh, and hopefully memorable somewhat. Uh, first of all, we, we learn from these passages from a Psalm 147, uh, Isaiah 45, James 1, Matthew 5, uh, and many others, of course, say these things too. But we learn from these, these passages today that everything good comes from God in heaven. And in that prophecy, uh, or actually in the psalm, uh, you see there this, this language that God is the one who sends down rain. God is the one who sends down rain. Uh, he sends the rain uh, down. Uh, he covers the, the heavens with the clouds, uh, verse number 8 says. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. So describing God as the giver of uh, plentiful rain, uh, the dew, the clouds, he causes uh, the clouds, he causes the rain, he causes, as that rain hits the ground, to cause the stuff that it hits to, to spring up. Uh, speaking of God in a very creative and a very powerful way, and of course we, we know from scripture that God uh, not only is a creator, but he's also the provider. He's the God of providence. And so he uses all the, all the scientific ways in which we understand and know uh, how rain clouds form, how rain actually comes down to the ground, and then how that water uh, mixes with the soil, hits the, uh, uh, the seeds, uh, then the rain, uh, and more rain, and then sunshine causes those seeds to germinate and to, and to grow. All that process is simply just described here uh, by the psalm as God preparing rain and God making grass grow on the hills. And again, the prophet speaks there uh, in, in, in Isaiah 45 after saying that he's the Lord. There's no other God but him. The prophet then prays out, shower down, rain down out of heaven. Saying not just of the earthly creation, but all gifts, everything good comes from God in heaven. In that context, it's speaking there of salvation uh, and all the various gifts associated with God's righteousness in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So everything good comes from God in heaven. As one hymn writer says, we plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. Again, all things are yours, nothing of ours, another hymn says, we bring you, uh, uh, we bring you Lord, of all powers, and hence with grateful hearts today, your own before your feet, we lay all good gifts come to us from God in heaven, we come to give him thanks. Secondly, secondly, we learn from these passages, every, uh, every good from earthly to heavenly goods, temporal to eternal goods, again, come to us from God. What is the good that comes to us from God? Well, they are all gifts, things that are earthly, things that are heavenly, things that are temporal, things that are eternal. And so we read, uh, we read there in Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 5, and the context is for Jesus' disciples to love their neighbor as themselves, not to hate. To love your enemies, to pray for those who persecute you. Why? So that we would be sons of God in heaven, because it's God who actually blesses the unjust. It's God who actually sends every good gift in the life of the unbeliever that they might even not even know. And so if God blesses the unrighteous, the unjust, those who persecute, those who hate Christians, those who don't trust that God is the one who sends down rain, those who don't trust in his son, if God does this good to those that are his enemies, how much more so should we uh, as his sons and daughters seek to show love and good uh, to our neighbors as well. He says there uh, in that passage, uh, the reason why we should love our, uh, love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us to be sons of our Father in heaven is because he makes the sun rise on the evil and he makes the sun rise on the good. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Now, again, that imagery of the sunshine uh, and the showers that come down out of heaven. Every good and every perfect gift comes down out of heaven from the Father of lights, James 1 says. And then the context there, he says, of his own will. He has brought us forth. So not just temporal goods like rain and sunshine, but eternal goods, our being born again, our regeneration, our salvation. Not just earthly things like bread and wine we sang from Psalm 104, uh, oil, which would have been used in those days, sort of like, uh, kind of like how we use lotion to, uh, to make your face shine, sort of like makeup 
but God gives to us the gifts uh, that come down out of heaven, especially his good and most perfect gift, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we sing in, in a very familiar hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. God is sort of the source, uh, the fountain of every single good, from earthly goods to heavenly goods, from temporal goods to eternal goods. Don't forget that today. Uh, don't forget that, that God is the one who gives us every single good and perfect gift. So all good, com- uh, everything good comes from God in heaven. Uh, every good uh, that he gives to us from earthly to, t- to heavenly, temporal, eternal, come from him, secondly. And then what we're called to do today, what God calls us is that everyone, everyone of us, everyone in the world, but us especially today, we are called to thankfulness for everything God gives. You and I are called to thankfulness for everything that God gives to us. The psalmist here, notice in Psalm 147 there, uh, what's the first word that that he says there in Psalm 147? What's the first thing you read? In English it says praise the Lord, it's hallelujah. The first word in the psalm is hallelujah, praise the Lord. And then he goes on to say why? Right? He's the one who builds up Jerusalem. He gathers outcasts. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up wounds. And notice uh, there, it's always been striking to me in this psalm that uh, uh, the Lord speaks of gathering outcasts, healing broken hearts, binding up wounds. And the next thing he says is that God determines the number of the stars. And he gives them names. The God who's made everything and, who, and who's named the stars, uh, who's cast them all into space, into the universe, is the same God who binds up broken hearts, heals wounds, gathers those who are outcasts. God is almighty. God is all loving, all gracious, all merciful. He's all powerful, but he's also all those things too. And so we are to give thanks. The first thing the psalmist does is say hallelujah, praise the Lord. And so we pray. Every one of us is called to give thanks to this God who is the source of all good. For every blessing that we have, we're called, all of us, to give thanks for everything that God has given to us, temporal and eternal matters. That's why prayer, as we say, prayer is the, the principal part, it's the chief part of the thankfulness, the thanksgiving, the gratitude that God demands of us, requires of us, and invites of us. Prayer is the chief part of our thankfulness, the principal part of our thankfulness to God. So we speak, God has spoken and God has given and God has blessed, and so we speak in response. We pray to him. We pray to him. One hymn says it like this, the Lord who truly knows the heart of every saint invites us by his holy word to pray and never faint. We oftentimes think, you know, if God is sovereign and God is almighty, God is the one who numbers the stars and uh, determines the number of the stars, gives them, all by, uh, gives them all their names, well then why pray? Well then why pray? The Lord who truly knows the heart of every saint invites us by his holy word to pray and never faint. Because God wants you to pray. He asks you to pray. He invites you to pray. He wants to hear your thankfulness today. And so let us give thanks today. Let's also close the year praying. And then open the new year again, doing what? Praying, being thankful. And then every time we have a chance to, everywhere we find ourselves, let every one of us pray. And having prayed, to pray and give thanks again. So let's pray. I'm going to pray two short prayers, and then if you would uh, amen with me at the end, and then uh, I'll invite uh, you to give thanks as well. O Almighty God, from whom every good prayer comes, and who pours out on all who desire it the spirit of grace and supplication, deliver us when we draw near to you from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind, so that with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections, We may worship you in spirit and in truth. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and all of God's people say, Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, 
we humbly beseech you for all sorts and conditions of men, that you would be pleased to make your ways known to them, your saving health to all nations. More especially, we pray for the good estate of the universal Christian church, that it may be so guided and governed by your good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to your fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in their minds, their bodies, or in their situation in life, that it may please you to comfort and relieve them according to their many needs, giving them patience under suffering and a happy outcome out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake and all of God's people's sake. Amen. At this time, if you'd like to pray out your thanksgivings to God, please do.